Hi everyone, so previously we looked at a couple of my eyepieces and uh, continuing on with that theme we're going to look at the next one in the series. This is the Orion Stratus 3.5 millimeter 68 degree eyepiece and this is my my primary ultra high magnification eyepiece these days and uh, switching over to Stellarium I'll show you what the field of view looks like with this eyepiece. So this is what the field of view looks like in Stellarium with this eyepiece and we're looking at uh, Messier 44, uh, an open cluster, the Beehive cluster. And with this eyepiece in my 8 inch f3.9 Dobsonian, the magnification I get is 228 times and the field of view is 0 0.3 degrees. So this is a very, very high magnification eyepiece, primarily reserved um, for for uh, when I'm looking at the planets or the moon. It's rarely for DSOs as the magnification becomes quite high in this case. Now, um, looking at Messier 44, I noticed that the view in the center in this eyepiece is quite sharp and the faint star near the center of that cluster is quite easily visible. Um, and you mainly see coma and lateral chrom chromatic aberration in the outer 30% of the field of view of this eyepiece and the coma and lateral chromatic aberration get progressively worse the further out you go. Uh, so this isn't really meant as a wide field eyepiece and uh, since you'll mainly be using it for the planets, moon or double stars at such a high magnification, uh, it does a pretty good job for that. Now I switched it over to the double star caster uh, and that was easily split at this magnification and the view was pretty sharp at the center. Now switching over to the moon, uh, it, the moon looked pretty good in the center at this high magnification but I noticed that as I moved the moon towards the edge I started to notice some minor distortions in the outer 30% uh, of the field of view. Um, and uh, from about 30% onwards, the moon was no longer circular and it started to lose detail. And I did see some minimal purple fringing closer to the edge as well. And when the moon is hitting the edge of the field of view or the field stop, uh, I can see some very minor yellow border around the edge as well. It's not distracting and overall this is a pretty good high magnification eyepiece. So up next, the eyepiece we're going to look at is this one over here. This is the Mead 8 to 24 millimeter zoom eyepiece. Now, what I noticed with this eyepiece is that uh, the construction is quite good. It's it's a full full metal eyepiece uh, with a plastic uh, area to hold over here, and you've got a nice uh, soft rubber eye cup. Uh, now, uh, no complaints about the construction. I do hear a tiny bit of a rattle when I shake the eyepiece uh, from the glass moving inside, but that's quite normal for zoom eyepieces, so that's nothing to be worried about. Now, switching over uh, to Stellarium, uh, this will give you a good idea of, of the magnification. Um, so. Looking at Messier 44 with this eyepiece, you can just barely see the faint star near the center. And partly due to the low magnification, it isn't quite as sharp as some of the other eyepieces. And there is some very minor flaring visible on the brightest stars in the cluster. The field of view is not quite as wide at 24 millimeters, and you start to notice some combination of coma and field curvature in the outer 50% of the field of view. And the outer 25% of the field of view is, is not very good in this eyepiece, which again is fairly typical for a zoom eyepiece. And despite the fairly narrow field of view at 24 millimeters, uh, you can just about fit the entire cluster in the field of view. Uh, and as you zoom in and out, the focus does change a little bit, so you will have to refocus again. Now the moon looked uh, quite sharp in the center at 24 millimeters, but there was some minor chromatic aberration visible on the edge of the moon. And as I moved the moon towards the edge of the field of view, I started to notice some distortion about 50% of the way to the edge meaning that the moon was no longer circular and it started to lose some detail as well. And I did see some dispersion as well and the moon wasn't perfectly focused in the outer 50% of the field of view. And when the moon is hitting the edge of the field of view or the field stop, I can see some minor purple, purple border around the edge uh, of about the same intensity as in the William Optic and the Lunt eyepieces. 
So at 24 millimeters, that's the lowest magnification and the smallest 40 degree field of view. Uh, its performance was was decent for a wide field eyepiece, but uh, if, if if I was able to carry multiple eyepieces with me, uh, then I, I would rather go that route. But for portability purposes, this is the eyepiece that I would take if I could only take one eyepiece. Now looking at this eyepiece uh, at a more zoomed in focal length of 16 millimeters. Uh, let's take a look at what it looks like in Stellarium. There we go. At 16 millimeters, that's what it looks like. So a bit more of a zoomed in view. Um, the view does look better though. And uh, there's still some noticeable coma in the outer 40% of the field of view, but the center of the field of view is pretty sharp. And the moon looks pretty sharp in the center at 16 millimeters, and there's almost no distortion in the center. And no distortion as I move out towards the edge as well until I get to about the outer 15%. Um, and there's no chromatic aberration and no bright ring around the edge, which is great to see. And uh, this eyepiece does perform best around 16 millimeters, around the middle of, of the focal uh, length of uh, the range of focal lengths, which again is pretty standard for a zoom eyepiece. Uh, up next, we will look at this eyepiece at the maximum magnification, which you get at 8 millimeters, and you also get the widest field of view at 8 millimeters, which is 60 degrees. And looking at Stellarium again, this is what the cluster looks like at 8 millimeters, uh, 60 degrees, so at the highest magnification. So you've got a wider field of view than you do when you're zoomed out to 16 or 24 millimeters. Uh, now zoomed in at 8 millimeters, uh, the stars in the center do look much nicer now. Coma is noticeable in the outer 50% of the field still, and the last 25% is fairly bad. And I still take it traveling with me, so I don't have to take my case of five pieces. Now at 8 millimeters, at the highest magnification, the moon looked pretty sharp in the center uh, uh, and there was no distortion in the center and no chromatic aberration. And the distortion only became visible in the outer 15% or so on the moon and no chromatic aberration was visible even at the edge. And there was no bright ring around the edge when the moon hits the edge again, which is great to see. So that's the mead. 8 to 24 millimeter zoom eyepiece. Up next, we've got the Celestron 32 millimeter Omniplossal eyepiece. Uh, now, this is a good 1.25 inch eyepiece with an all metal construction. And switching over to Stellarium, to, you'll see what it uh, what the beehive cluster looks like in this eyepiece. So uh, as you can see over here, the beehive cluster easily fits in the central 50% of the field of view because of the low magnification. And the stars are fairly sharp in the center uh, of the field of view, although not quite as sharp as the 82 degree or the 100 degree eyepieces. Uh, there was some minor light scattering on the higher st uh, on, on the brighter stars. Uh, the magnification is too low to clearly see the faint star in the center of the cluster. And that's one of the advantages of the ultra wide field eyepieces like the 100 degree eyepieces. You can get higher magnification and still get a huge actual field of view. Now with the Celestron 32 millimeter Omniplossal, the coma was noticeable in the outer 50% of the field of view, but the view is still quite decent. And the coma only becomes objectionable in the outer 15% of the field of view, and the eye relief is very good, and it would be comfortable to use for eyeglass wearers as well. I would recommend this as a good starter eyepiece uh, for wide field for beginners who don't want a 2-inch eyepiece or who don't want to spend a lot of money on a 2-inch eyepiece. And it's actually fairly well made, uh, fairly good optically, and very light and inexpensive. So if, uh, if, if money isn't an issue uh, and your scope has a 2-inch focuser, the Lunt 20mm 100-degree eyepiece does offer a larger actual and usable field of view, and the stars are sharp across the field as opposed to just in the central 50% uh, and it, the 20 millimeter Lunt 100 degree does also offer a much more immersive field of view than the Solstron Omniplossal but again they're in completely different classes so we can't directly compare them. 
Um, looking at the moon through the Celestron 32 millimeter Omniplossal, the moon looked uh, quite nice and sharp at 32 millimeter with no distortions at the center and no chromatic aberration. And I noticed a bit of internal reflection, but it's not distracting. And the minor distortion was visible in the outer 30 to 40 percent on the moon. Uh, detail was still pretty decent until about the outer 10% and the field stop is sharp and there is no bright ring even when the moon is hitting the uh, the field stop. So there was some minor chromatic aberration that was visible on the moon near the edge of the field of view but overall uh, this eyepiece performed quite well for a wide field eyepiece. Up next uh, in the wide field 1.25 inch category we're going to look at the Antares 24 millimeter 70 degree eyepiece. Um, I found that the actual field of view on this eyepiece seems closer to 65 degrees than 70 degrees and uh, overall it's, it's a fairly decent 1.25 inch eyepiece with fairly good construction. I did notice over the years that some of the paint inside had started to flake off um, and I had to open the eyepiece and then clean that those little paint flakes in there. Uh, but since then it's been performing quite well and I haven't had any other issues with it. And the faint star near the center of the cluster Messier 44 was just barely visible and there was some very minor flaring on the brighter stars. Um, overall I find that this Antares Spears Wheeler 24mm is, is uh, fairly sharp. It's decently sharp in the center, a bit sharper than the Orion Stratus 24mm, but the outer 50% of the field of view is pretty bad and the outer 35% is unusable. Uh, this is a good eyepiece as a wide field finder scope eyepiece, I think, but I wouldn't use it as my main wide field eyepiece and I wouldn't recommend buying this one uh, as the overall field of view and the usable field of view is a bit less than the Celestron 32mm Omniplossal that we looked at earlier over here and the outer field of view in the Antares is also more distorted so I would go with the Celestron Omniplossal instead if you need a wide field eyepiece uh, that's cheap and fairly light. Now looking at the moon through the anterior Spears Wheeler, I did notice some internal reflections when the moon is, uh, is closer to the edge of the field of view. It wasn't really noticeable in the center of the field of view, but as I moved the moon towards the edge, I started to notice distortion and chromatic aberration about 50% of the way to the edge of the field of view, and the moon loses significant detail in the outer 30% of the field of view. And there is no bright ring around the field stop when the moon hits it, which is good. But overall, I would say this is not a great wide field lunar eyepiece. So up next we have the Celestron Axiom LX eyepiece. This is the 10 millimeter 82 degree field of view eyepiece. Now this looks similar to the new Celestron Luminos LX but it's actually considered optically better. And with this eyepiece, uh, the faint star in the center of Messier 44 was easily visible. There was no light scattering and the stars were sharp all the way across the field of view. Uh, now switching over to Stellarium to show you what Messier 44 would look like. Uh, this is roughly what it would look like in terms of the field of view. And that's the faint star over there. Now switching back. So um, what I noticed in this eyepiece was that the stars were sharp all the way across the field of view um, and there was no light scattering either and uh, it's, it's, it's a, a phenomenal eyepiece in my opinion. I do actually prefer this one to my Teleview 9mm Nagler Type 1 that I had and I ended up selling the Teleview Nagler 9mm Type 1 after I did a direct comparison with this eyepiece and I actually found this eyepiece easier to look at and it, I found it easier to see the entire field of view um, and I would definitely recommend this eyepiece if you can find the the uh, Celestron uh, Axiom LX. Now what I did in this case was that since it's quite a, high, a heavy eyepiece I ended up removing this metallic aluminum part uh, just to make the eyepiece a lot lighter it doesn't affect the optical performance at all just to remove this but it makes the eyepiece a lot lighter to travel with um, now all you have to do is just take out the screws from either one of these sides that are hidden behind a, a little little decal 
and you can do that uh, of course that's going to void your warranty but i didn't have any warranty on this anyway so uh, that didn't didn't particularly matter to me and i just wanted uh, a lighter eyepiece so that worked out quite well for me um, so now uh, what I found was that it's very easy to see the entire field of view at once if you don't wear eyeglasses uh, and I definitely recommend this eyepiece uh, for, for, for a medium uh, eyepiece which is about what I consider 10 millimeter focal length. Uh, the view of the moon was very nice and sharp as well through this eyepiece and I noticed some very minor internal reflections when uh, looking at the moon in, in certain positions but again the reflections weren't too distracting and at the very edge of the moon the detail is still very good uh, but I do see some very minor chromatic aberration I see a faint purple blue ring at the very edge of the field stop when the moon is hitting it but it's not very distracting and the view is still very sharp in detail so uh, again a very nice eyepiece and one of my standard eyepieces in my eyepiece case um, now up next we're gonna look at another eyepiece this is the Celestron Plossel 25 millimeter I'm gonna switch over in Stellarium and show you what the view would look like through that eyepiece there we go so um, switching back again to the Celestron Axiom LX this is what an 82 degree field of view looks like and this is what the Plossel's 50 degree field of view looks like uh, so there as you can see Celestron 25 millimeter no other information on the eyepiece um, now these usually come with the very cheap and basic scopes that you might find on the used market most of the time um, the field of view is quite narrow and it's uh, not very sharp even in the center uh, the outer 60 to 70 percent of the field of view shows coma and the outer 50 percent is quite unusable I find um, the field stop or the edge of the field is not around either and it shows some jagged edges and if this is the only wide field eyepiece you have then you can use it but I definitely recommend upgrading to something something better like the Celestron 32mm Omni Plossel. Um, considering you can get these for under $50 usually uh, you know I would definitely recommend this as an upgrade over the basic Celestron Plossel that, uh, that usually comes with cheaper scopes on the moon the view in the center uh, it, it doesn't look bad but it's not quite as sharp as most of the other eyepieces and the moon doesn't quite snap into view uh, or snap into focus I didn't notice any internal reflections and the chromatic aberration in the center was pretty minor the edge of the moon wasn't very sharp even when the moon was in the center of the field of view and I started to see distortions and chromatic aberration about 50% of the way to the edge. The outer 30% of the field of view is pretty much unusable in this eyepiece. Uh, so overall I wouldn't recommend buying these these kinds of eyepieces new but if they come with, your, with a cheap scope and you're just starting out you can use them and then at the first chance you get I recommend upgrading to something a little bit better. Now up next uh, we're going to look at another eyepiece. This is the Zumbel 18mm Long Eye Relief eyepiece. Uh, now I'm going to switch over in Stellarium and show you what this is what Messier 44 looks like with this eyepiece. Um, now comparing it to the so this was the 25mm Omni Plossel this is the Zumal 18 millimeter long eye relief eyepiece. As you can see, the field of view is not too much wider. Uh, but one thing I notice about this eyepiece is that it's it's, it's not uh, you know not meant to be a wide field eyepiece in any way. It's it's more for people who wear eyeglasses, uh, and it's mostly for planetary viewing. So the center is quite sharp uh, as a planetary eyepiece, and it has a long 20 millimeter eye relief. So if you wear glasses, it'll be super easy for you to look through, uh, and you can have the eye cup up in this position or down. I find the eye cup quite easy to use. It's fairly fairly soft plastic. 
but uh, since it's not made to be a wide field eyepiece and they focus mainly on eye relief and a sharp center, I noticed that the outer 50% of the field of view is pretty much unusable due to coma in this eyepiece. And I only recommend it as a planetary eyepiece or for, for, for people who wear eyeglasses and have trouble with eye relief on regular eyepieces. Uh, the double star caster was visible as two distinct stars, but it wasn't a clean split as the magnification was still too low on this eyepiece for me uh, with my scope at 800 millimeters. And on the moon, the view was very sharp in the center of the field of view, and there was lots of detail with no distortion or chromatic aberration in the center. I did start to notice some significant distortion, chromatic aberration, and chromatic aberration about 50% of the way to the edge of the field of view, and the moon was no longer sharp in the outer 50%. Up next, we've got the Orion Sirius Plossel 10mm multi-coated eyepiece. Um, now, this eyepiece is uh, it's fairly small, very, very light, and it's also one of those eyepieces that often comes with, uh, uh, with the beginner scopes by default. Switching over to Stellarium, uh, let's take a look at what the field of view looks like. So, this is what the field of view looks like in this eyepiece. Uh, this is a 10 millimeter 52 degree field of view, so the actual magnification I get with my scope, which is an 800 millimeter Dobsonian or 800 millimeter focal length Dobsonian, is 80 times magnification, and I get about 0 0.65 degrees in total uh, for the actual field of view. So uh, I noticed that the center of the field of view in this eyepiece is quite sharp and the faint star near the center of Messier 44 that I was looking at is, is visible. Uh, the outer 50 to 60 percent has noticeable coma but the coma isn't quite as bad as the 13 millimeter Celestron Plossel and the eye relief is quite tight so it's not very suitable for eyeglass wearers. Um, eye relief is not quite as tight as uh, as one of the Mead 4.7 millimeter 84 degree eyepieces we're going to look at later. Uh, and overall I would pick the Celestron 13 millimeter Plossel over this one and we're going to look at the 13 millimeter afterwards. Uh, but both this and the 13mm are only suitable for absolute beginners as you'll likely want something better with a wider field of view eventually. Uh, the moon looked pretty sharp in the center of the field of view with no chromatic aberration and the moon still looks good about 50% of the way to the edge of the field of view and, that, and at the edge of the field of view I can see some distortions but there is no chromatic aberration still and optically the view is pretty good on the moon but eye relief is pretty short and the field of view is quite narrow. Uh, now looking at another similar eyepiece to the Orion Sirius Plossel 10mm is this one over here. This is the Celestron Plossel 13mm fully multi-coated eyepiece. Uh, now if we switch over to Stellarium we can see what the field of view looks like in this eyepiece. Uh, it's slightly more zoomed out and we get 61, mag 61 times magnification instead of 80 times uh, when using this eyepiece. And uh, again, similar to the Orion Sirius Blossel, uh, this eyepiece is, is pretty sharp in the center, but not quite as sharp as the Mead 4.7 millimeter that we're gonna look at uh, next. And the faint star in the center of Messi A44 is easily visible. The view does degrade quickly in the outer 50% of the field of view due to coma, and the eye relief is pretty good. Uh, it's not too bad of a starter eyepiece, actually. And the moon seemed pretty sharp in the center. I started to notice some minor distortions and chromatic aberration about 50% of the way to the edge of the field of view, and the moon becomes less sharp from this point onwards. So overall, a decent beginner eyepiece, but again, you'll want to upgrade to something better with a wider field of view and better eye relief eventually. Up next, we're going to look at the legendary Mead Ultra Wide Angle 4.7 millimeter multi-coated eyepiece. And switching over to Stellarium, you can see how the field of view differs from the previous plossels that we looked at. This was the field with the last eyepiece, the 13 millimeter uh, plossel, and this is the field of view with the Mead ultra-wide angle 4.7 millimeter 84 degree 
field of view eyepiece. As you can see, the view pretty much fills the screen. It is a much uh, wider field of view. Um, now, the actual field of view could be a little bit smaller than the listed 84 degrees. Um, and overall, I find this eyepiece to be very, very light and small. That's one of the main reasons I've still kept this eyepiece, despite having some of the larger 100 degree field of view eyepieces. Uh, and 110 degree in the case of my uh, William Optics and Lunt 4.7 millimeter. Um, overall, I find the uh, eyepiece to be very well made. It's heavy duty metal construction. It's a soft uh, rubber eye cup. Um, and the view is sharp all the way across the field of view and optically it's, it's absolutely excellent. The eye relief is very tight though, so you'll have to get very, very close to the, to the uh, glass to be able to see the entire field of view. Uh, it's not really suitable as a wide field eyepiece for eyeglass wearers, I find. I would recommend one of the newer, newer uh, eyepieces like some of the, the William Optics or the Lunt XWA or HDC series. They do give you better eye relief compared to this eyepiece, so you don't have to get quite as close. Switching over to the double star caster, uh, caster was an easy split at this magnification um, because with this eyepiece I get 170 times magnification in my uh, 8 inch f3.9 800 millimeter focal length Dobsonian and the separation on caster was very nice and clean and very easy to see the two components. On the moon, the view is again very, very nice and very sharp across the entire field of view and the, the moon just, just snaps into focus. And I find this to be uh, much sharper than the Plossal eyepieces. Uh, there was no distortion visible at all. I, I saw some minor chromatic aberration in the outer 10% of the field of view, but the image is still very sharp there. There was no bright ring around the edge of the moon when the moon was at the edge of the field of view, which is great. And overall, this is an excellent high magnification eyepiece, but the eye relief is pretty short, so it might not be great for eyeglass wearers. Um, I also noticed some very minor ghosting as I moved the moon around the field of view, but it didn't distract from the field of view. And between this and the William Optics XWA 5mm eyepiece, I do prefer the wider field of view of the, of the XWA 5mm. Uh, but both are very good eyepieces, but as you can see the XWA is much much larger and much heavier whereas the Mead is much lighter, more suitable for very light uh, scopes. Um, I primarily keep this around to use in my solar scope because the uh, William Optics XWA weighs almost as much as the solar scope itself. So if I'm looking for portability on a light tripod, uh, sometimes I just use this eyepiece instead. So it's suitable for traveling as well, or if you're going on a hike with a small scope, you probably don't want to carry any very high, heavy eyepieces, so that's when I would use this one over here so that's the that that's the last uh, of my eyepieces that I'm reviewing today so thank you very much for watching and in the future I do hope to review some other eyepieces as well if you have any particular ones in mind that you're interested in seeing uh, let me know I might end up running into them and I might buy them just to review uh, and see how they compare to some of the ones that we looked at today uh, so again, thank you very much for watching and if you have any questions at all, feel free to just post them in the comments below and I will definitely uh, make sure I respond. So, clear skies.